Well, moving on to Quara State now, and uh, yes, who knows if they also have been having meetings and what stage will they be all day now? Any targets? Uh, Kola Olumo joins us on the line. He is the chairman of uh, Trade Union Congress, Quara State Council. Mr. Olumo, thank you for joining us on the line today. So bring us up to speed. What is the current situation about negotiations and payment of the minimum wage in Quara State today? Yeah, thank you, Chambali, and um, thank you, Kaidi. Yeah, um, as it is in Quara, um, the government uh, just uh, inaugurated the committee, and uh, immediately after the inauguration, uh, we had a meeting. Uh, but that, like, at the meeting, we had uh, we made a clause. And the clause was that uh, the composition of the body is not uh, as it needs to be f from the labor side, because we believe um, the process of um, collective bargaining allows that um, the groups, that is the employer and the employee, should have um, um, a common stand and um, equal opportunities be given to all. And uh, we thank God that um, the government side had agreed to that, uh, that our next meeting is coming up on Monday, by God's grace. Next meeting. Hello? When was your first meeting? Uh, we had our first meeting on the, the, the first. That was, um, that was last week. No, sorry, this week, this week, on Tuesday, yes. In other words, you, you, you haven't had any major conversation about negotiating or presenting the adjustments? No, we've, um, we've not had a discussion precise. That was the first meeting we had. But as it is, hello? Go ahead. Yes. But as it is... Uh, before now, we have presented to the government that this is a table that has been adopted because it's an issue of the national minimum wage, and we have indeed presented that. Of course, uh, we expect that the government will want to grumble on it, that the capability of their having to pay was not there for whatever. Uh, we have a reason to, to prove to them that the state is viable and we believe that um, members should enjoy a fruitful minimum wage, even if you cannot have a good living wage, which is uh, what we have done so far. Well, that suggests that uh, labor is willing to shift grounds. Is that right? No, you, you see, it's, um, it's a process that has to go in form of a dialogue, the collective bargaining. If truly uh, they present to us some other figures or facts that the capability of the state is not there, uh, we have to share ideas. Uh, even if we have to, like, shift, we thank God um, it has been a consequential adjustment. And we can also retain the consequential adjustment as made by the state that is appropriate. I mean, as made by the federal that is most appropriate for the state, but um, in as much as um, there is need for a new minimum wage, we would not compromise on ensuring that we have uh, a well-improved figure for our members to benefit and enjoy the essence of a new wage. So what are the considerations that uh, labor is willing to make in a choir state uh, my colleague asked the other time, you know, I mean, you also made reference to the fact that the state government may likely grumble. And you have also raised the issue that there's a likelihood that this grumbling will be because the state may uh, raise issues about their capacity to pay based on the state's purse. So what are the considerations labor is willing to make? Uh, well, the fact is that, well, I'm no government. Uh, I'm just an um, employee. But as it is, we know it has always been the case that um, government will always want a situation whereby uh, you will have to, like, um, compare to, like, few reasons with them. And like I did say earlier, 
It depends on the facts and figures they bring forward to us, which we believe also we have our own facts and figures about um, the revenue generation, the, the available funds, and the state. So if, if they are coming out, you see, the essence, the essence of uh, this uh, committee and the, the, the collective bargaining process is about transparency. You understand? If they're transparent enough, and we see that they're transparent enough, of course, we tell our members, we let them know, these and these are the facts that are on ground. You understand? Collective bargaining is not something we just finish within one day. Because whatever you're putting forward, if we have grievances about it, we, you need to like allow us make our own findings and present whatever it is to you. And we also we take that time to reach out to our members and let them know because we are working for them. We cannot work in the dark. You understand? So let it not be like uh, we're compromising. But as it is, as it is, like I said, uh, we only had um, uh, a first meeting, which was just like um, like a welcoming meeting. Uh, on Tuesday, our next meeting that will kickstart the process fully is coming up on Monday, by God's grace. When you and, say... Um, I appreciate that um, the government are taking seat that effective from the time we had our last meeting, uh, they would appreciate that uh, this be concluded within three weeks so that uh, we can have um, a new minimum wage table in Kwara State for January salaries. So when you then say that the board needed to be properly constituted so that uh, negotiations can be you know, on a good basis, what precisely do you mean? Who do you want in there? Who shouldn't be there? How should that be reconstituted so they know that, yes, they have indeed met that grounds upon which you can then further negotiate? Well, thank you, Chamali. Uh, what really happened, what we did observe was that um, the, government, the state government went ahead and uh, brought in uh, people we don't expect that should be uh, part of the negotiating committee for a minimum wage. Well, for us, for us, uh, we, we, we are not, um, we are not um, discriminating or having any grudges because government side, that is government side, they have every right to bring on board whoever they want. I Equally, the labor side to have the right to bring up, but I can decide to request that the Secretary General be part of my meeting. So, in as much as that, but it's about the number. They were like um, 19, and we were just four. And we asked that, so, no, this might be kind of intimidating to us. We want to have equal number, even if we cannot have 19, we want to have at least nine people to on board. So, we have decided also to have. Um, the, the representative from Norway, the representative from the medical unit, the representative from the National Union of Pensioners, and the representative uh, from NGC, so that if we are going to have very uh, elaborate discussion and facts and figures from all the representatives we will put to place, because uh, it is each of the representatives knows where it pinches most. And um, we don't want a thing that will be done uh, beneath. We want a thing that will be done putting in place all uh, needed tools and machineries. And by so doing, we want to have uh, people from uh, the various um, constituencies of the labor to be involved, too. The most, so most importantly, you know, in such bargaining, uh, issues might be put to vote. So we do want to be a loser in that light, too, so that we have our numbers, too. There is me likely play out. In the events that the government side, negotiating side, say, well, I'm sorry, we, we, we can't uh, reduce any more from, any further from the numbers we have, is Labour going to consider an option of adding more people on your team, or will you be insisting that, look, this is all that is required for our own team, so government will have to cut down to have the same figure if issues come to voting. Well, I want to believe. I want to believe that um, at that point there is need for magnanimity from the government side, because if by the time we are thrown some of these figures to you, and it's truly these are the facts on ground, we have rather nailed you 
So there's no way how to, and to just agree to some things, which is why we believe that the kind of people, like I said earlier, I am not meant to like discuss whatever the government side had put on board. But it's just unfortunate that the kind of people the government have brought into the negotiation uh, are not those we expect. Like, okay, you're bringing in um, SAD, SAD, that commissioner, this commissioner, that, who are not really, who are not really those kind of people, the kind of representatives that should be. But like I did say earlier, please, it's not of concern to me. Government can bring in anybody who they like. Likewise, the other body, which is labor, we can also bring in whoever we like. Now, from your question, it, it, is, it, is, it is something that has to be done because definitely, definitely, there is need for us to reach an agreement to that effect. They will have to shift sites and will also shift ground. It's normal. It's normal. But like I did say, we won't shift grounds that it will go to the level that the impact of a minimum wage will not be felt by our people because the essence of it is to have a better livelihood than what has been before now. And if you agree with me, this thing has long been there. With the new minimum wage ought to have come to effect in 2015, 16. And look at what we are now. This is this is 2020. So I believe our leaders to have come up with this in 2019 have been so patient and uh, been so understanding with the federal nor even the state. So I see no reason why government, the currency government, will not have the reason also to consider us. And also, generally, I must tell you, uh, in Kuala State, we have a new government whom we just brought on board. This should be an avenue for him to appreciate us and say thank you for having me in the office. So he should be able to do that. And the masses, the masses, I mean, the choir workers who are the masses will be happy for it too. When you raised this concern with the government representatives, what kind of feedback did you get? Uh, they didn't say no. And, um, we've been asked to, like, uh, all things being equal by Monday, uh, we'll be bringing everybody on board, my God's grace. They didn't say no. In fact, uh, we appreciate uh, the, the listening of the chairman of the committee. She did collect their, their names and their numbers. And uh, we asked him that um, um, we needed a platform. And she did instructed that um, a platform be created for us to, like, access ourselves or need some food, to which has been done. Should us be hopeful in the state? Yes, uh, we, we are very hopeful. We are very hopeful because uh, we, we, we cannot see a choir that will be lacking behind. Uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, um, before now, Parasite uh, has always been one, in fact, one of the first five to implement minimum wage. I actually so, meant, I actually meant the pensioners. The pensioners, of course. I told you earlier, we're bringing them on board. That's why we're, we're going to have the state chairman of pensioners in, included in our negotiation. Yes. So All right, then. Them on board. They are part of the, the they are part of us, and uh, we know that everybody will show my great to that one day or All the right, other. All right, so, so we'll look to see uh, how that eventually plays out, and we wish uh, uh, yourself and your team and the government all the best. Kala Oluma, Chairman TUC, Oshun State Chapter. But we did also reach out to the state government. We were supposed to uh, perhaps have the Commissioner for Finance just bring us up to speed on that, but as we speak, they were not, they're not yet able to get back to us. Who knows if that will happen before the program ends, but we'll see what happens. But yes, uh, we'll also see if we could check with one or two more, but uh, don't forget those consequential adjustments had been an issue. The arrears had been an issue, but ever since you might have heard that uh, yes, that had been paid, and then the states have no reason, as it's been said time and again. I know that the Nigerian governor, sorry, when they had that meeting time and again, did raise concerns about what it is that they were willing to pay. Uh, the last time it was agreed in 2015 or thereabout, they had concerns as well. But at the moment, Labour themselves, they're also speaking to those states, trying to gather in how many or which states, where are they in the scheme of things before they take their very next step. So 
Uh, some dailies did report yesterday that about 18 states were having challenges paying some of this, but uh, labor, we understand, uh, just uh, checking with those figures to be sure. But as you might have heard, a number of states who we also spoke with previously before now did say that we're having that meeting behind the scenes. Some of them just setting up that committee, but the workers themselves come 31st of January, they want to get some, you know, what beeps on their phones. They want to be sure that all of this would have been over and done with, and then they are paid because the law has been signed. But I think one of the things that's really making this interesting now yeah. and something of concern is the fact that Labour gave some kind of ultimatum. Uh, before the end, it was on December 11, they met last year, and said by December 31st, any state, well, all governor, governor, governors had that, uh, had that uh, timeline. Mm -hmm pay before, at least let there be an agreement, even if you yeah. won't start paying, before the end of uh, 2019. So far, uh, just as you have said, a number of states are still having issues, even beginning the conversation in the first place. We're hopeful, you know, that, you know, we will not have any kind of labor crisis on our hands as a result of this one, because a happy workforce most certainly will make the bank account smile. Well, yeah, so we'll move on. Uh, maybe when the others are ready to speak, we'll uh, bring them on board. But for now, we'll have to uh, toss it to Abuja. Uh, well, yes, we did look at some security concerns or matters or items yesterday. So um, we just might as well follow it up today. Mark where?